and that there was nothing surrounding cells. Through the microtubules, it says we're under attack. We're under siege. Protect yourself. We're going to protect ourselves. And one of the things that the cell membrane does is send a message that results in closing down active transport channels in the cell. And we, we call that hardening of the cell membrane. The permeability of the membrane is compromised. Nutrients cannot get in the cell. Waste product cannot get out of the cell. Now, because nutrients cannot get into the cell, the cell loses energy. So the cell becomes energy deficient. And when the cell is energy deficient, it's not able to communicate through microtubules. The reason is because microtubule communication is like sending a laser. It's instantaneous light energy. It takes a lot of power, a lot of energy to push that signal through the microtubule so that the intercellular communication, the rapid intercellular communication gets shut off. So now the cells are not able to talk to each other. And when the cells are not able to talk to each other, the tissues are not able to be efficient and the organs are not able to be efficient, and the organism gets sick. And that's why when you intervene with a subtle energy intervention, immediately you get a positive response because the intercellular communication is restored because the subtle energy comes in and it vibrates on the microtubules. Now the microtubules are usually full of water. Now in order for there to be communication, energy communication, the microtubule has to contract and expand. It has, it has to go <gasps> like that. And when that happens, there's a little hole in the water channel, and that's where the signal goes. Now, when you bring in the subtle energy from the outside, it causes the microtubule to go, <gasps> and that's what restores the intercellular communication. Now, the other thing that happens is that waste product can't get out of the cell. So now you have a buildup of waste, and in that waste you have free radicals. Now free radicals are interesting. I trust I'm not the only person in the audience who participated in the 60s. We, it has nothing to do with whether I inhaled or anything like that. It is, and a free radical always likes a party. A free radical will always go where the action is. And inside the cell, the action happens at the mitochondria. The mitochondria are always having a party. That is where all of the energy from the cell is developed. It's the respiratory center of the cell. So what happens is these free radicals go to the mitochondria. They crash the party. And when that happens, the mitochondria, whose job it is to provide energy for the cell, becomes further compromised. So energy in the cell goes down more. Now the other thing that happens is that inside the cell, you have something called messenger RNA. Now messenger RNA is part of the genetic material. And what the messenger RNA does is it floats around in the cell and it just is sort of like the bouncer at a party. Want to make sure everything's going fine. And if it sees something that is not going fine, 
it folds itself in a certain way so it can carry a message to the DNA. Now what happens when the cell is under siege and the active transport channels are closed down, the messenger RNA take that information from the inside of the cell membrane and they take that information to the DNA both in the nucleus and in the mitochondria. When the messenger RNA comes in and starts to convey that information, it results in a whole bunch of pieces of messenger RNA and DNA to be unbound inside the cell. And when those pieces of messenger RNA and DNA are unbound, they're highly reactive. They are viewed by the free radicals as a party. The free radicals go and now they disrupt the process of information transfer from the messenger RNA to the DNA. A result of that is the formation of something called micronuclei. And micronuclei are pieces of DNA or messenger RNA that function well enough to form a membrane around themselves. So now what you have inside the cell are these pieces of DNA that have formed a membrane around themselves and they're floating around in the cell. And that would be fine. Except that because the free radicals have disrupted the mitochondria, the mitochondria now sends a message to the rest of the cell saying, I cannot do my job anymore. I'm going down. The ship is going down. And that triggers something called apoptosis. And apoptosis is when a cell commits suicide to make room for a fresh cell. And when you have that premature triggering of apoptosis, now you have the cell bursting open. And under normal circumstances, that would be fine because the pieces of waste and the pieces of micronuclei that are released into the interstitial fluid, the river between cells, would normally be gobbled up by globulins from the immune system. But somebody's got to make the call to the immune system. And we have compromised intercellular communication. That call is never made. So now what happens is you have these micronuclei who are released into nutrient-rich intercellular fluid. And they have a ball. And they proliferate. And they clone themselves. And that is a mechanism that leads to the development of tumors. When the intercellular communication is disrupted, Depending on when in life that occurs, you have different symptoms. If that occurs in utero, the symptom you have might be autism. And if that occurs during teenage years, the symptom you have might be attention deficit disorder or unexplained anxiety. And if that occurs in very late decades of life, you may have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease. So the disruption of intercellular communication leads to all of those clinical conditions. So that when you disrupt intercellular communication, you can lead to a whole host of serious diseases. But the situation is worse than that. Because what happens is that depending on where the cell is in its life cycle, it may not trigger premature apoptosis.